Hey everybody, while going over some questions and messages and comments from my Q&A video, and I'm still going to make that video, I'm just looking for proper time and going over all my questions, but I saw one that I thought I should make an individual video on, simply because I already have a video clip all ready to go and I kind of forgot about it and never made an introduction to the video. And it is on the ancient site of Lalibela in Ethiopia. And why don't we just fly in there here? And here we are, we're going to zoom into one of these amazing churches. Here we are on a rocky hilltop in Lalibela. And here is the amazing churches that were simply made by removing the stone. And these are made about 1,200. But here is a good look at one of these amazing churches and how they actually did this. Created the whole thing simply by removing the stone. That is very amazing. And here is another look at another church. This one was kind of carved into the side of a rock face. But Ethiopia has a deep history, and it's kind of related to the Old Testament, but they claim in Aksum to hold the Ark of the Covenant in the small church of St. Mary's in Aksum. But this is the city of Lalibela, and these churches are definitely what made it famous. And here is some more carvings into the rock at Lalibela. A stairway going down below here. But this is a fascinating sight. Now, just a brief history here. It says, while many spectacular churches have been constructed in Ethiopia, perhaps the country's most famous churches are the ones carved out of stone. Located 150 miles south of Aksum, Lalibela is the best example of Ethiopia's hypogeum architectural tradition. With 11 rock-hewn churches, Lalibela is understandably a place of pilgrimage for those in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The site Lalibela was originally called Roa, but eventually took the name of King Lalibela, who ruled around 1200. And it seems to me this was the story. Jerusalem was sacked by the Muslims right before 1200. I think that's when it happened. So King Lalibela and a group of people built these churches so people wouldn't have to make the pilgrimage to pilgrimage to Jerusalem, which is no longer under the Christian control. So they built these churches down at Lalibela. And it also says in text that King Lalibela had the help of angels building these rock-hewn churches. And the ancient aliens people will tell you the angels obviously were aliens. But the Templar theory makes much more sense. If they were just sacked in Jerusalem and wanted to build a new place of pilgrimage, obviously whoever built these churches were excellent masons and knew what they were doing. And the Templars and the time period just fits. Maybe around 1210 AD is when these were being really constructed. And that six years after the Templars really became the most powerful group and six years after they went into Constantinople and stole the most holy relic of all time. But just finishing up here, it says Lalibel is 11 churches are carved out of a hillside, which is made of soft reddish volcanic rock. The churches can be divided into two complexes, a northern and a southeastern complex that are connected through a series of carved passageways and naturally occurring wadis. Six churches are featured in the northern complex and four in the southeastern complex. The 11th church, Beta Georgis, the Church of St. George, stands alone and is not part of either interconnecting complex. And I believe that is the very first church, the one that is shaped like a cross, the one right here. The dating of this is only about 800 years ago. If you have any comments on Lolly Bell, please leave it. But that's about all the time I have for an intro, but now I'm just going to leave you with a little tour around Lalibela and also a 3D scan made by a channel who makes their video shareable so I always appreciate that and I will leave some links below 
and hope you enjoyed this and you all have a very nice day.